Good day everyone. Welcome to my video. Today we're going to look at this power inverter that um, I'm going to have to break down and admit that, you know, it's my fault that I possibly ruined this inverter. Um, I took a camping and, you know, it was dark and I was in a big rush and I, you know, I when I was hooking it up, I touched the wrong thing, something, whatever, you know. I mean, I've had this thing for 20 years and I, I've never messed it up, but I messed it up. It could happen to anyone, so yeah, well, whatever. But anyways, um, all is not lost. If this has happened to you, I'm going to show you how to at least make an attempt on a repair. And I'm happy to say that my repair worked out, but let's get into it here quick. So first of all, this is the back panel. I've removed it already, so you don't have to you know, watch me do that. But there's things you need to be aware of. There are capacitors in these inverters which carry a lot of uh, voltage, so they can be dangerous. Now it does say, uh, basically, uh, oh, where does it say here? It says it somewhere. Do not open, it's right there. Warning, shock, oh my gosh. Warning, shock hazard, do not open. Okay, so if you're gonna go along with what they say, then you're never gonna be able to repair this and you're gonna have to go buy a new one. But I don't believe in that. I'll give you some pointers to try to be safe. Again, I can't recommend that you open this because there's a risk that you could injure yourself. So this is what I'm doing, follow along. Now, in the back here, I wasn't sure how this was going to work out, by the way, because I wasn't aware of a few things here. So the first thing that I attempted to do was to remove this back panel. Now three of the screws came out just fine and dandy, but the final screw, they have it glued in there or something that cannot be removed. I thought I was going to have to take a drill and drill it out, but I got three out and then I just lifted up and, and well, I, the, the head of the screw actually broke off. so. That's okay, we still have three good spots to put it back on with. But yeah, they purposely made it so that you, you can actually see the glue and stuff on there. Well, maybe not on camera, but they made it so you could not take this screw out. They didn't want you to get into the back. Now, what to look for in the back? I was surprised that there's actually a fuse in this. Because usually they just want you to, if you damage it, to, uh, you know, it's wrecked and you have to buy a new one. So. I wasn't sure if it was a fuse. I thought maybe I cooked the whole thing. But to get this fuse out, um, and this is just like a, an automotive fuse. It's a 40 amp fuse. Now, these round things you see here, these are the capacitors. Um, I mean, you'd have to be a little bit irresponsible to end up electrocuting yourself. You know, don't be sticking in metal objects or you know metal pliers and stuff. To take the fuse out, you should use a fuse remover. And it's just made out of plastic and then all they do is they clip on you know don't stick your fingers down in there hook it onto the fuse and let's pull it out and again at this point I still wasn't sure if it was the fuse but I got the fuse out and then now this might be hard to see on the camera but these fuse like there's the two poles here and then they're they're joined in the middle by a thin, sort of a wire type piece or a thinner material. And how the fuse works, if too much current goes through, it just burns out that center piece. So if you can see it on camera, great. And so this is a new fuse. And if you can see it, you can see this one's good because the little, the bridge there is not broken. Whereas this one it is broken. And these fuses are color coded, so well, most in most cases anyway, this is a 40 amp fuse. This is what it came with. Uh, it has a 40, so that means 40 amps. Now, I found a 30 amp fuse. A 30 amp fuse is going to work just fine here. I bet you can go down to a 20 if you wanted to, but all I had was a 30 amp, and so I'm going to put that in. So, to put it back in again, you know, you could hook it into your, just this, the same device you used to pull it out with, hook it in there, let's put the fuse back in. 
And what I did at this point, of course, I took it out and I said, okay, well, I hope it was just the fuse that blew because who knows, there's some electronics in there. So I went out, I've tested it out and it actually works fine now. So, I mean, that just saved me a whole bunch of hassle and money. So that's really all there is to it. So anytime you come across, and maybe it's not, maybe it just it quit your inverter and you don't know why, there's a multitude of things that could have happened that could cause that fuse to, to blow. Could be certain reasons, but this is what to look for. Um, try and get it open, be careful. Don't electrocute yourself. See if there's a fuse in it, replace that fuse, give it a try. And that's exactly what I did and it works fine and dandy. So at this point, that's really all there is to the video. And I'm, you know, despite this one screw that would not come out because they tried to prevent me from opening it. Anyways, I got that out and so we're just gonna put that back on. Screw it back together and we're good to go. So if you've messed up your inverter or it quit for some unknown reason, just saying, you can go and check it out. But be careful and uh, well, like and subscribe. Have a great day. I'm pretty happy that I resolved this. Thank you very much for watching.